Hey guys, this week we are working on Hagrid's hut as a cake with the pumpkin patch. First, I'm sticking my six inch cake down to the board with ganache and I'm filling it with chocolate buttercream, stacking it four layers high. I'm then just cutting a slight flat area on both the six inch and the five inch cake where they join so that they sit together a bit closer. Continue to stack the five inch cake up with filling too. I'm then carving the front door area flat and also two sides where the windows are. You can continue to cut the backs like this but I've left them round as you keep more cake this way and it's not important to the design. Then just trim the top edges into a soft slope. You should be left with this sort of shape. In a bowl, I've got all my off cuts from the top of the six inch and the top of the five inch cake and into this I'm adding a big blob of buttercream and mixing it together for a cake pop mixture. I'm using this mixture to bulk out the roof so there's no waste and we haven't had to bake a whole extra cake just for this tiny bit. Just smooth it on with your spatula up into flat points. Now go in with your ganache to seal it all in. This layer doesn't have to be neat, it's just about covering all that sponge so it doesn't dry out. All the recipes are linked in the description box. Once that layer is set, you can go in with another neater top coat using scrapers to get straighter sides. As Hagrid's hut is on a hill and the smaller hut is perched on it, we're using a black strip of paste to give the illusion of it being raised. Just adhere it around the bottom with water and cut it straight. I've just rolled up some white paste into a long rectangle and I'm unrolling it around my larger hut. As you can see, I didn't measure it very well and it doesn't quite stretch all the way around. So annoying. But don't panic, the hut is highly textured and we can get away with cutting a bit of extra paste off the roof and just inserting it into the space, smoothing the seams together with your fingers and getting rid of any excess. Absolute budget job. Just use your acetate smoother to adhere the paste and don't stress on getting it smooth or neat. Run your scalpel around the roof edge to get rid of the bulk before going in and cutting it a bit neater. Here I've got my favourite brick texture mat, which you've seen me use in lots of different tutorials and I'll leave it linked below along with all the other tools I use. I always like to use this mat with my smoother as I find it gives a more even pattern. Just push your thumb up and down the smoother to transfer the texture. Make your way around all the sides and don't forget to fill in that little strip towards the roof. I've done the same for the small hut but I'm placing the bottom edge above that black strip as I try to unroll it around. Trim it off flat and even to reveal the strip and apply the same texture. With the Dresden tool I'm first plotting in the little square windows on the small hut and some larger rectangle ones on the large hut. Once you're happy with your window size, you can cut and remove the paste with a scalpel. Next we're plotting in the doors. Remember to have your door quite high up as the small hut has wooden steps and the larger one has stone steps. Sometimes we just work on autopilot and just put the doors at the bottom. Here is my technical method for measuring my inserts. I'm just holding up my brown paste to the door to see how much it needs trimming and I just trim off the width and height until it fits snugly. As the doors are wood, we are running our Dresden tool up and down it for the wood texture and then going in deeper for the separate panels of the door. Roll two white sausages of paste and stick them to either side of the door with water, chopping them level with the top. Push your texture mat along the fronts and the insides of these to make stone pillars. Cut a small chunky rectangle of white paste and lay this across the pillars and the top of the door. I'm just sticking this with water and as long as you press firm enough against the hut, it shouldn't sag in the middle. A quick way to make steps is this chunky rectangle of paste that fits right in between the pillars. 
and then I've got a smaller rectangle for the first step, which just sits on top. Once that's in place, I'm just gently squashing the very centre down so that the steps look worn and old. Then just take your scalpel and cut your larger rectangle down into a matching bottom step. I'm going in with some brown airbrush colour mixed with a little bit of black. I'm not being neat here, I just want to cover the whole white area with colour and now I'm drenching it with a spray bottle of water. This allows the paint to run into all those deep texture cracks. Dab off all the runny drips and a lot of the colour will come with it leaving a worn brickwork effect with lots of detail. I'm then going back in with my airbrush colour to deepen parts where there would be shadows, such as the bottom of the huts and where the buildings meet, as well as around the pillars, the door, the steps and the roof. As you can see, I left this overnight to dry and it's gone from shiny and wet to matte. I'm now just cutting small pieces of black paste to fill in the windows. Using circles of white paste, start with your small hut as it should be a little lower down and trim to the contours of the cake. I'm just leaving the back round and again following the straight sides of the front. I'm then merging the points to the top of the roof. In each of these new sections, score in some deep lines and roof tiles. They don't all have to be even, we are aiming for rustic, so make some tiles thicker and some thinner ones. Just keep going around until you have filled the whole roof. Now do the same for your larger roof. This will overhang the smaller one very slightly. For the very tops, I'm squashing a disc of paste on my board and cutting straight edges a bit like the roof shape and cutting the top flat. Just stick this on with water and top it with a white spike of paste. Everything I've used so far has just been plain sugar paste with nothing added. As a last little feature, I'm rolling a small string and wrapping this around the top of that spike very gently and trimming off the excess at the back. Whilst we leave this to set, I'm squashing some balls of paste to the board with water. It doesn't matter what colour these are as they will be covered up, it's just to add a bit of interest and landscape. Cover the whole board and the mounds with water. I then rolled out some emerald green and I've just cut a random piece and laying it over all the humps on the front and cutting it to fit around my cakes. Again, don't worry about this being neat as we're going to texture the whole thing with our handy nail brush. I have two of these for cake decorating only, as well as a small cake decorating toothbrush, which makes it easier to get into all those hard to reach areas, usually at the base of your cake. And then doing the same at the back, just patching my pieces of grass together, because once you add texture, you won't be able to see any of the seams. Here again, you'll see I've not quite made it big enough, but we just shove an extra piece in, squash it down, add texture, and you would never know. I'm then taking the pointy end of my Dresden tool and just flicking up some of the grass towards the cake so it looks a little bit overgrown. The roof on some pictures had a slightly blue tone, so I mixed some blue gel with black gel and watered it down to make a wash. Cover all of your roof in this. The runnier the paint, the more it will sit in the shape of your tiles. Dab some of the darker colour in areas to add interest. I've mixed some dirty green colour and I'm just squashing the paste straight against the wet roof and stabbing at it with one of my star piping tips. My piping tips are pretty much solely used for this technique and don't see buttercream or piping bags very often. I've cut a little cylinder of white paste and I'm sticking it against the small hut's door and then taking some black paint and painting two stripes down it for the illusion of an outdoor lamp. Add a little cap of black paste to the top and finish it off with a tiny ball of black paste or a drage. Now I've cut a small rectangle of brown paste. Again, this has nothing added to it and the brown is always super sticky. This way I can stick it straight to the outer corners of the window just with water. 
If you add Tylo to these and the paste on your cake has set, it's a little more difficult to stick and you may need to use something like royal icing. Same with the steps, I'm just going in with straight sugar paste and I've cut one end at an angle and pushed it against the bottom of the door and I've then cut the bottom flat with the scalpel and merged it with the grass. It can be super fiddly because it's super soft, but I'm just sticking everything with water. And don't forget, this is Hagrid's hut. It's supposed to be rustic, rugged, and not exactly perfect. With the paste being so soft, it makes the wood look a little bit bored and twisted, and we're just supporting them a little bit with pieces of kitchen roll underneath. Whilst that sets, we are going to work on some pumpkins. You start with a ball of orange paste and run your sharp end of the Dresden tool from top to bottom, working your way around until you have a cute chubby little pumpkin. Go ahead and make a few of these in different shades of orange. I made some with extra red and mixed some with brown. And I also made smaller pumpkins with more lines or larger pumpkins just for variation. I've now added some white dust to my roof paint, which makes it more opaque, and it will cover the green on your board. I'm just joining the two huts up with a gravelly path, tapping in darker areas with a big brush. For book beak, I'm starting with a carrot shape and I'm pushing the bottom into a longer sausage. Push this piece up into a neck and gently roll the fat part in the middle to separate the top half of the body from the bottom. Stick this down onto the path and chop the neck a bit shorter. Insert a cocktail stick down inside to support the head. The leg starts as a little sausage with one end flattened out between your fingers and we're adding in a little bend. The flat part sticks against the back side and we're tucking the leg underneath it as it's going to be hidden with a wing. The front leg is a sausage with the two ends flattened out. One is being trimmed into three toes, which you just want to separate and gently round off into little points like claws. Roll just beneath this to thin it out a bit. I placed it down against the body for size and decided I wanted to shorten it. All I had to do was take my Dresden tool and mark in a lower elbow area and bend it along that line and pinch off some of the shoulder. That way you don't have to make the whole thing again. I'm adding this to one side of the body and making another one to overlap the claws. The wings start as a little cone of paste flattened down in your palm into a large teardrop. I'm sticking this across the top arm and covering the back leg. Do the same on the other side. I'm now just poking a little hole in the bum to make it easier to insert the tail, which is another little cone of paste and the larger end is being dragged out into the tail. Trim down the cocktail stick, leaving just enough to hold the head. Whilst we wait for the neck just to firm up, I'm taking some green airbrush colour and adding some definition to the grass. I'm deepening the colour around the bases of the huts and also snaking in colour across open flat areas. Don't forget the moss, as all one colour can make it look a bit flat. For Buckbeak's head, we're starting with a ball and I'm running my little finger across the centre to make a deep channel. Gently place this on top of the neck and squash the head in line with it. In this deep channel, push in the eye sockets with a ball tool and place pale orange balls inside them. If you push that top ridge down, it'll instantly give him his angry look. The beak starts as a little cone, which you just want to shove between the eyes, and pushing it from underneath will give it a little curve. Add a tiny oval underneath this for the bottom part of the beak and blend it in with the Dresden tool. Where these two join, pull out a tiny line either side to further his expression. His hair on the top is a sausage of paste pulled out with the flat end of the Dresden tool and blended onto the back of his head. Now add small black dots for pupils and give him a paint job. These are just various shades of grey, just by mixing in either more white dust or more black gel. Leave some areas white and define around the eyes with black. Now he really looks serious. Do not touch his pumpkins. Other black areas are the tips of his claws and the tips of his tail. For foliage, I've got some dark green flattened teardrops and I'm just pulling out rounded leaf shapes. 
They are super quick to make, but they make such soft, floppy leaves to sit your pumpkins in. Just apply these all around Buckbeak and start building the pumpkin patch. I also added a little brown post near Buckbeak. You can also make different types of bushes just by using the sharper end of the Dresden tool this time and adding more lines in for taller bushes at the side of the hut. Finally, no landscape would be complete without rocks. Just add lumps of grey paste, squashing them to the board and tapping in sharp rock edges. And because these types of details are my favourite, I'm now adding even more smaller bushes and clusters of grass. Again, just like the moss, because everything else on the cake is shaded, you'll need to add some paint to your pumpkins so they don't stand out. And we're done. I just love cakes like this with lots of texture. You'll see I've snuck the birthday girl's name in as a little door plaque on the hut and also placed the edge on the rock so it doesn't draw too much attention away from the scene we've created. I hope you enjoyed this one and picked up a few tips to add to your own cakes. If you've created any cakes using my tutorials, don't forget to tag me over on Instagram as I do love to share them in my stories now and again. Also, maybe consider sharing this tutorial if you found it useful. Thanks guys, see you next week.